Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are checking out the Pavo 20 Pro. It is a 93.7 millimeter wheel-based brushless hoop quadcopter weighing in at less than 150 grams. Made specifically for the DJI O3 Air Unit, Cadex Vista and the Runcam Link HD Camera VTX systems. And it will come either with the built-in ELRS or the TBS receiver protocols. And this is the first ever pioneering Cinehoot for freestyle with the use of the new low-pitched 2218 2.2 inch tri-bladed props with the 1.5 millimeter shaft co-developed with GenFan with the 1104 7200 kV lava series brushless motors which was designed for the 3S 2.2 inch quad specifically and it is constructed with the crash proof PA12 thickened hoop ducted frame which in combination with the powertrain will produce 8 to 11 percent more extra thrust and here is the size comparison to the pavo pico and the pavo 25 v2 and here it is in comparison to the pavo 20 and as you can see it is just slightly bigger than the pavo 20 90 millimeter wheelbase versus 93.7 millimeter wheelbase and it weighs in at just 66.3 grams without the battery and around 150 grams depending on the battery so at first glance it looks identical to the pavo 20 just slightly bigger now the carbon fiber main frame measures in at two millimeters in thickness just like the Pavo 20. The flight controller is the F4 2-3S 20 amp all-in-one FCV1. The same flight controller as the Pavo 20. And this one here is with the built-in ELRS receiver, the serial ELRS receiver. And here is the receiver antenna. It is said to have about 800 meters of control distance. However, I would stay within 500 meters just to be on the safe side. So if you want to use the onboard ELRS or the TBS receiver, leave it just as it is right out of the box in its default status. And if you want to use an external receiver to get more range, it has the selective power savings to offer the rx3 and the tx3 pads to be used for external devices just like the pavo 20. simply remove the chip b to cut off power on the onboard receiver and remove the resistors to release ur3 pads it delivers 9 volt at 2 amps to prevent screen blackout for the dji 3 and 5 volt at 3 amps for external devices. It has the built-in DJI O3 6-pin PMU connection port, so no soldering is required, and the wiring harness is also included. But if you need 5 volt instead of the 9 volt for use with the Walk Snail Avatar HD Mini 1S and Lite, bridge the 5 volt pads from the default 9 volt pads. Now the 4 pin USB port is easily accessible from the rear to connect to Betaflight. And now that the capacitor is even hidden from view inside, unlike the Pavo 20 where it was soldered and placed right outside sort of blocking the way of the USB port, they have made it even easier to access the port and the USB adapter cable to the USB-C dongle is provided. So it's really simple to connect. 
It's got the XT30 battery connector cable, and it has the wiring harness prep for the LED light strip. So it is a simple plug and play. And the five volt chip on board LED light strip length is 560 millimeters by four millimeters in width with self-adhesive backing if you want to install the LED lights. So here is a diagram to connect external receivers. We have the buzzer pads, the S-Bus pads for use with stuff like the FR Sky protocol receivers. We have the TX and the RX pads for external ELRS or TBS Crossfire receivers. And we have the HD connection port for the DJI O3 Air Unit, Cadex Vista or the RunCam Link. We have the pads for a GPS module as well. Link to the diagram is down below. So what are the differences between the Pavo 20 and the Pavo 20 Pro besides the frame size? Well, the motors are the 1104 7200 kV motors versus the smaller 1103 8500 kV motors. And they are mounted with beefier screws. The props are now the new tri-bladed 2.2 inch low pitch props versus the bi-bladed props. And of course the hidden placement of the capacitor. Now the recommended batteries are the same batteries like the Pavo 20. You can use from 450 milliamp to 650 milliamp 3S batteries. So the battery bay is 20 millimeter as well, the same size as the Pavo 20. And the price is exactly the same as well at $104.99 for either one. The DJI O3 mounting bracket is now slightly bigger as well with better antenna mounting cutouts and the Camera mount has now two holes instead of just one with good protection side plates for the camera. And it also supports the camera filters for the DJI O3 Air unit. It comes with rubber dampeners for vibration jello control when mounting it. And the frame comes in the black color, but you can get the transparent gray or the blue color as an additional purchase. And it includes the carbon fiber frame for just $11.99. So the easiest way to bind it is to use the binding phrase, but you can also use the traditional three times powering it on and leaving it on on the third time to put it into the binding mode and binding it to your transmitter. But the most simplest way is to put it into the Wi-Fi mode and connecting to the ELRS web user interface and typing in your binding phrase and saving it, provided you have the same binding phrase already set up in your transmitter. Next, go into Betaflight to make adjustments to your preferences. Now you are ready to install the DJI O3 air unit and the bracket with the provided anti-vibration rubber dampeners. All right, so I don't have anything attached yet. It's just the quadcopter with the battery, 550 milliamp. No VTX attached to it yet. So I'm just gonna test it out before I go ahead and attach the VTXs. 
Oops. Okay, signal strength all the way up, so there you go. So you don't really need the HD VTX to fly this thing. It's just a quadcopter by itself without any camera system attached. So you could even attach a all-in-one VTX if you want. Okay, I don't have much room here in the front yard. So I'm just test flying it to make sure everything is working correctly. Very light. And you do have tons of power. Oh yeah, let's do a full punch out. Yeah, it's got lots of power. Oh yeah, very controllable. Just like all its siblings by Beta FPV. Okay. Put on an all-in-one VTX and see if it can fly with that. So you can also fly this with an all-in-one VTX if you don't have the DJI O3 air unit or one of the other HD VTX systems. Okay, so here is the first flight with the all-in-one VTX and it is my first FPV flight as well with the Pavo 20 Pro. It's always kind of static around the house, so bear with me. Feels pretty good, really nice. Just a fish eye effect on the uh, FPV camera. Okay, so that was pretty good, but it's like I need a little bit more room. <laughs> And the power loop was pretty good as well. Okay, it has a little bit of a yaw washout. And there you go, a big one right there. So I'll kind of take it easy from here on out. But yeah, you can definitely fly this thing. But this thing is actually made for the HD VTX mounted on the top with the weight of the HD VTX as well. So it is super light at the moment, but it does power loops pretty good. And on the split S's, you kind of have to slow it down a little so it doesn't have that yaw washout kickback. Yeah, not very good reception around the house, for sure. And there's a little stopping right in the middle of the roll as well. And that wasn't pilot maneuvering. That was the quadcopter doing it all by itself. So there is a video on how to mount the DJI O3 air unit, but it is actually for the Pavo Pico and they never updated it. But basically the mounting procedure is the same for this quadcopter as well as the Pavo 20. So it is pretty much self-explanatory. You can go ahead and watch it. I'm going to go ahead and mount the HD VTX, the DJI O3 air unit and continue to fly after I land on this little flight. Okay, so we got the DJI O3 air unit and the bracket installed now. 
and as you can see the lens is pretty well protected from the side panels of the bracket and as you can see the rubber dampeners the screw that installs the DJI 03 air unit bracket onto the carbon fiber frame is slightly longer than the rubber dampeners themselves so they have a little bit of cushion going up and down to eliminate vibration and jello all right i'm gonna go ahead and put the uh camera lens protector it's not a filter but it is a camera lens protector and here it is with the camera lens protector now remember you're gonna have to do it vertically and not horizontally all right so let's go for a little line of sight flight test all right line of sight with the dji o3 air unit not as light as it is without still feels really good let's do a full punch out tiny bit of pop wash and a little bit less power than without the DJI 03 air unit of course so hopefully we don't get that yaw washout kickback but as far as I can tell lots and lots of power even with the DJI 03 air unit installed all right bring it in and fly it FPV all right here is our first FPV flight with the DJI 03 air unit feels real nice Oh yeah, loop feels a little bit better with the weight added on. And split S's, yeah, there's no yaw washout kickback as well. Nice. Woohoo! It does have some hang time. Oh, this thing is really nice. Flies really nicely. It eats up the battery real quick though. I'm flying it with the 450 milliamp battery and it is already showing 3.6. So I'm gonna have to land it. Okay, so here we go at the park with a 550 milliamp battery. Beautiful day here in paradise. And this thing is so smooth. It actually feels like a bigger quad. Look at this thing. I built this new pavilion here. Looks like there's nobody around. Perfect. Oh yeah, good thing there's nobody at the playground too. Now I feel like this Pavo has better overall feel of balance than the smaller Pavos. But it does suck up the battery a lot. 
and it seems to over rotate a little on the way down. And usually most of the hoop quadcopters have that behavior. That one was pretty good there. And see that? I over rotated a little bit, but corrected myself. However, it does power loops pretty good though. Oh, look at that. It stayed locked this time due to the quick uh, split S. And hoo 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 hoo. Almost got stuck in the tree that time. Woo you also notice that there's a ring around the uh, FPV video in the goggles, but in the O3 air unit DVR recording, the black ring probably due to the lens protector screen is kind of taken out and appears on the harder turns only. Yeah, nice and smooth. You can go up high, come down low. Nice cinematic shot. Oh yeah, nice and smooth. So we're getting about three minutes with the 550 milliamp 3S battery here. Okay, here's another flight. So which Pavo would I choose? Now, if you want to mount a naked GoPro or other lightweight action camera, Go with the Pavo 25 V2 or bigger. Now the only thing that I dislike about that one is that the access to the SD card slot on the DJI O3 Air unit is not simple. You have to remove the bottom plate. So that kind of sucks. So out of the three, the Pavo Pico, the Pavo 20, and the Pavo 20 Pro, this one, I would choose this one, the new Pavo 20 Pro, hands down. They're all basically the same price. It is like Beta FPV made it better than the previous models. So it is like they are killing their own previous production models with the new versions, which is a good thing for the end user. That means they are innovating and making their products better and better. So check it out for yourself. The link is down below. And that one was a pretty good one. So that'll do it for this video of the new Pavo 20 Pro, the first ever brushless DJI O3 air unit hoop quadcopter with the new 2.2 inch low pitch tri-bladed props. Tri-bladed props. So I thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.